Early computers used valves. Valves are electrical components which change the signals fed into them. In this case, the signal is being chopped in half. That's called rectification. But then along came the transistor. Transistors were faster and more reliable. The biggest use of early transistors was as amplifiers. Amplifiers change the size of the electrical signals. Amplifiers are the basis of many electrical devices. Especially things like radios. Radios used to have hundreds, even thousands of separate components. But now everything's getting smaller and smaller. The result is integrated circuits, chips, the latest wonder of the age. Thousands of transistors and other components squeezed onto a tiny piece of silicon. Once designers had the new micro components, they could begin to think of new things to do with them. A synthesizer is a musical instrument, but because it's a very modern electronic musical instrument using lots of high technology, it gives us so much more control over the sound than we've ever had with any other previous musical instrument. The first requisite of any musical instrument is that it has to have something to make a sound. And the synthesizer has a part that vibrates, but electronically, so you can't actually see it moving like you can see the string of a guitar or the reed of a clarinet, but it does vibrate electronically, and it's called an oscillator. The oscillator is an electrical circuit which produces regular signals. Oscillators can produce signals of different shapes. The different shapes can produce different types of sounds. The oscillator is connected to a keyboard. The keys trigger signals of different frequencies, different musical notes. What happens next? The sound passes along the audio chain from the oscillator into the filter. And there we can modify the sound by softening off those sharp points on the oscilloscope. And the softer it becomes, so the softer we hear the tone. The filter is another electrical circuit. It changes the shape of the signals, and that changes the tone. The final stage in the audio chain is called an amplifier. And this determines the amplitude of the sound wave, or how big it is. And the bigger it is, the more of it we hear, so it's like a volume control. So between them, the electrical circuits produce and shape the electrical signals. Ultravox are in the recording studio laying down the tracks for a new LP. Many of those tracks will be produced on one of the group's electronic instruments. tricks on me. Can we try it again from the top? Ultravox have been using synthesizers for some time. This, um, this synthesizer here um, is one of the first synthesizers that was commercially available. I mean, it's quite an old one, but we still use them. Um, they're, they're very basic synthesizers. It's an analog synthesizer. Uh, it was developed by Dr. Robert Moog quite a few years ago. Um, the problem with these things is this is this is the type of synthesizer we had when I joined the band at first. 
and when you play sort of hot, sweaty clubs, the things we got to tune all the time. Um, it's, it's basically a three oscillator synthesizer, so you can you can actually switch off one of the voices, one of the oscillators, and get a very thin sound, very very normal, basic sound. But when you start adding the other oscillators, giving it a bit more depth and body, you can tune these things together. You hear it tuning into itself there. And this is the actual synth that we did, um, the sort of Vienna part on the bass part, the, uh, you know. But I mean, th these things um, now, are, uh, you can't buy them now. I mean, uh, technology's moved on. Uh, far too much to to uh, sell people things like this anymore. It's a, it's actually a it's a an antique synthesizer now. You know, it's about 15 years old. Uh, we've moved on to this type of thing now, um, which it's a German synthesizer. Actually, this uh, this synthesizer, when you create a sound on it, it sounds as though although you've never heard the sound before, you never heard anything like the sound before. It sounds as though it should be an acoustic instrument because it has overtones. It's got 2,000 waveforms in it, so the actual waveforms can change when you play the, the sound, like a normal instrument would. And when you play one note on a piano, there's so many overtones and so many waves and forms inside that sound that this does the same type of thing, except you're making totally inhuman noises from it. Now, what we've got in, in this, uh, this thing today, in this synthesizer, is, uh, is me. I mean, that's me going, ah. <laughs> This particular instrument here, or any of these instruments, you can give to you know 20 different keyboard players, and they'll come up with 20 different types of sound and 20 different feels that you can that a keyboard player could play. Uh, it just it, it does anything you want it to do. I mean, once you've actually written a song, then you've got to decide what type of sound uh, you want to use to put this, you know, the best way to put the song across. Yeah. 